In the previous webcast, we took a look at the electrophilic addition of HBr to the double bond of ethene. And since our electrophile, the hydrogen of hydrogen bromide, does not have any lone pairs associated with it, we know that the first step will be an A sub B step in which a carbocation intermediate is generated, followed by a nucleophilic association step where the bromine's non-bonding lone pair donates into the empty A orbital of our carbocation intermediate. And if we take a look at the unsymmetrical alkene here and we add hydrogen bromide to it in the same fashion as before, what we'll see is we get a major and minor product. A great way for you to predict what the major and minor products will be for any reaction is to construct a reaction coordinate diagram. Our A sub B step yields a highly unstable carbocation intermediate. We know it will be our rate determining step for the addition of an electrophile to an alkene double bond. The A sub B step is an elementary step that involves late transition states, and by taking a look at these transition states and our carbocation intermediates, we can understand why the pathway on the left is more favorable than the pathway on the right. Notice that if the alkene double bond broke and we added the hydrogen to this atom here, we would generate a carbocation on this atom and it would be a secondary carbocation. However, if we added our hydrogens to this lowermost carbon atom, we could see that we generate a tertiary carbocation. And since tertiary carbocations are more stable than secondary carbocations, our A sub B step would preferentially follow addition of the hydrogen to this lowermost carbon atom rather than generating the secondary carbocation as we see on the pathway to the right. Thus, since we are able to generate a more stable tertiary carbocation, our alkene reactant prefers to go through this pathway. And after subsequent addition of the bromine atom to this carbocation in our A sub N step, we will generate our major product. In a very similar mechanism to addition of hydrogen bromide to an alkene, we could also add water to an alkene under acid catalyzed conditions. A good habit to develop when interpreting reaction mechanisms is that before you even begin drawing arrows, take a very careful look at your reactants. What I could see is that I could see my electrophile is this proton, and since it doesn't have any lone pairs, I know that this electrophilic addition to an alkene will consist of an A sub B followed by an A sub N step. Also, I can notice that my alkene, which is propene, is a unsymmetrical alkene, so I know that this A sub B step will preferentially generate the most stable carbocation intermediate that it can. And what I could see is that if I add the proton to this carbon atom, I will generate a highly unstable primary carbocation, whereas if I add the proton to this carbon atom, I will generate a more acceptable secondary carbocation. To do this, I could use my two electron arrow tool, put parentheses around my double bond, and when I draw this arrow, I want to be sure that I show the hydrogen adding to this carbon atom. After that's done, I could use my select tool, and by double clicking on this alkene, Using my copy and paste hotkeys, I could paste this structure into the next box, and then by using my bonding tool and my hotkeys for charge, I could show generation of this carbocation intermediate. We could see that our next step involves the addition of water, and we know that it will follow an A sub N step since our electrophile did not have any lone pairs. So if I type O and then click in the box, I now generate H2O. I could use my two arrow electron tool once again to show the association of our water nucleophile to this carbocation. Once again I could use my select tool to double click, copy, and paste my structure into the next box. And then by using my bonding tool and the hotkeys for charge I could take away my positive charge and I could change this atom to my water group and be sure that I include the positive charge to show that overall charge is conserved. Finally, since the final step involves loss of a proton, I will have to draw out a oxygen to hydrogen bond, change this atom to a proton, and then use my two electron arrow tool to show donation of this sigma bond into our oxygen cation. And thus I generate my final product. A summary of what we covered in this lesson is that when electrophilic addition to an alkene occurs where our electrophile does not have a lone pair of electrons, we know that the reaction will consist of an A sub B followed by an A sub N step. And when our alkene is unsymmetrical, we can look at the carbocation stability that is generated after our A sub B step to determine what our major product for this reaction will be. And finally, when we are under acidic conditions, 
As we saw in our last example where we added water to an alkene under acidic conditions, we will have only positively charged and neutral intermediates.